सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट नेशनल कैरिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री पेज नंबर ट्वेंटी समरी द नेशनल एजुकेशन aiming to improve educational outcomes in the country for all children it has been more than 3 decades since the publication of the previous national policy on education in 1986 a lot has transformed in this period significant changes in demography and in educational access and attainments and information revolution the expansion of knowledge particularly in domains such as cognitive neuroscience computer science deep learning and artificial intelligence global economic and health shocks 2008-20 and challenges of climate change and environmental degradation nep 2020 aims to respond positively to these changes and makes clear recommendation and makes clear recommendations for education at all levels starting with education for children of age 3 to higher education some of the key highlights of the policy in the context of school education are a a5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 stage design Schooling has been divided into four stages based on the styles of learning best suited for those age groups. Foundational stage for ages 3 to 8, preparatory stage for ages 8 to 11, middle stage for ages 11 to 14, and secondary stage for ages 14 to 18. Early childhood care and education. ECCE The policy has laid significant emphasis on ECCE. It is now well recognized that early educational intervention along with nutrition is foundational for future positive outcomes. A holistic curriculum has been developed keeping in consideration all the relevant developmental domains of early childhood. C. Foundational literacy and numeracy. the policy gives the highest priority to achieving universal foundational literacy and numeracy the abilities to read and write and perform basic operation with numbers is seen as a necessary foundation and indispensable prerequisite for all future schooling and lifelong learning d curricular aims emphasis on conceptual understanding rather than rote learning and development of capacities and values such as critical thinking decision making and creativity and ethical human and constitutional values e multidisciplinary holistic and integrated education focus on this across the sciences social sciences art humanities and sports for a multidisciplinary world in order to ensure the unity and integrity of all knowledge f reduced curriculum content the policy makes clear recommendations to reduce the content load in each subject to its core essentials and thereby make space for critical thinking and holistic learning g flexibility and choice in the secondary stage the policy recommends increased flexibility and choice of subjects of study particularly in secondary school including subjects in physical education the art and crafts and vocational skills so that students can design their own paths of study and life plans h integrating vocational education the policy aims to overcome the social status hierarchy associated with vocational education and requires integration of vocational education programs into mainstream education i multilingualism 
given the multilingual heritage of india and the cognitive benefits of learning multiple languages the policy gives strong emphasis towards learning multiple languages including languages native to india page number 21 j rootedness in india the vision of the policy is to instill among the learners a deep rooted pride in being indian not only in thought but also in spirit intellect and deeds as well as to develop knowledge skills values and dispositions that support responsible commitment to human rights sustainable development and living and global well-being thereby reflecting a truly global citizen the policy recommends the formulation of a new and comprehensive national curriculum framework for school education ncfse to realize the above vision for school education this ncfse thus aims to continue the transformative journey initiated by nep 2020 this chapter is a summary of the ncfse it outlines the core principles adopted for the formulation of the ncfse and then summarizes the key chapters 1.1 a few preliminary points to read this ncfse or in short ncf it is useful to have a common shared understanding of the most basic terms being used 1.1.1 curriculum curriculum refers to the entirety of the organized experience of students in any institutional setting towards educational aims and objectives the elements that constitute and bring to life a curriculum are numerous and include goals and objectives syllabi content to be taught and learnt pedagogical practices and assessment teaching learning materials tlms school and classroom practices learning environment and culture of the institution and more there are other matters that directly affect a curriculum and its practice or are integrally related while not being within the curriculum these include the teachers and their capacities the involvement of parents and communities issues of access to institutions resources available and administrative and support structures 1.1.2 curriculum framework the curricula across our country must be informed by and be fully responsive to the glorious unity in diversity of india the imagination of nep 2020 where institutions and educators are highly empowered including to develop curricula is energized by this unity in diversity and the nurturing of it states have the constitutional mandate to provide high quality education to all children and their own unique state contexts inform their own approaches to curricula this ncf must aim to support exactly that it is a framework to help develop all the diverse curricula in the country while enabling consonances and harmony across the country and providing a basis for quality and equity page number 22 thus this ncf aims to provide the guiding principles goals structures and elements for the development of curricula informed by which the syllabi tlms including play materials workbooks textbooks and assessment methods will be developed by the relevant functionaries including teachers in the states boards and schools 1.1.3 what does this ncf aim to achieve the overarching objective of this ncf is to help in positively transforming the school education system of india through positive changes in the curriculum including pedagogy in particular this ncf aims to help change practices in education and not just ideas 
Indeed, since the word curriculum encapsulates the overall experiences that a student has in school, practices do not just refer to curricular content and pedagogy, but also include school environment and culture. It is this holistic overall transformation of the curriculum that will enable us to positively transform overall learning experiences for students. 1.2 Core Principles of this NCF Design This NCF has adopted some core principles in designing the curriculum framework to realize the vision of NEP 2020. A guide for practitioners the intent of this ncf is to be a valuable guide to practitioners of education whether they are syllabus or content developers or school teachers the language used and style of articulation is such that it is easily comprehensible and relatable to practitioners b specificity to be relatable to practitioners this NCF has gone into specific, non-binding suggestions and illustrations wherever they may be useful and used examples from ground experiences to illustrate concepts and the principles. There is often concern in the educational domain that being specific means being prescriptive, thus robbing the autonomy of the practitioners. However, this NCF is guided by the belief that being specific is a virtue, helping to provide a good starting point for practitioners. They can still always innovate, using the specifics provided only as a starting point or as an idea to be modified or replaced in a manner that is appropriate to their contexts and circumstances. The ground realities in the country indicate that practitioners are often left confused and directionless with only generalities and broad visionary statements on education. C. Pragmatic Considerations This NCF has considered ground realities, such as time available during the school day, resources available in most school contexts in India, and teacher availability and preparation. While it is true that all educational endeavours are exercises of hope, this NCF has consciously maintained an appropriate balance between idealism and pragmatism, providing in many cases both short and long-term solutions to problems being faced. Thus, the reforms suggested are expected to be within the zone of proximal development, ZPD, of the current education system as a whole. D. Learning Standards This NCF has set clear and specific learning standards, see figure 1.4, in order to bring clarity to all stakeholders, policy makers, educational administrators and functionaries, syllabus and content developers, parents, teachers and students on the intended educational outcomes of the curriculum. Since school education is a public good, it is hoped that such clarity among all stakeholders will bring more accountability and effectiveness to the education system as a whole. Page number 23 1.3. Learning Standards Education in a very fundamental sense can be defined as the attainment of valuable knowledge, capacities, values and dispositions. If that is so, one of the key questions for any curriculum framework is which knowledge, capacities, values and dispositions are valuable? In other words, what is worth teaching? This NCF responds to this question very specifically through a clear and precise set of learning standards. These learning standards and the processes associated with them, for example, the flow down from aims of education to learning outcomes is central to this NCF, 
to ensure alignment and integration of the different components of the design and practice of curricula such that our school education achieves what we want for our children. All stakeholders of school education must give the greatest of attention to the learning standards. 1.3.1 Broad Aims of School Education The learning standards are guided by certain widely agreed upon broad aims of school education that are articulated in this NCF. These aims have been arrived at from the vision and purpose of education as envisaged by NEP 2020. A. Rational Thought and Autonomy Schools should aim to develop independent thinkers who make well-informed decisions based on a grounded understanding of the world around them. B. Health and Well-Being School education should be a wholesome experience for students. Students should acquire knowledge, capacities and dispositions that promote mind-body wellness. C. Democratic and Community Participation Democracy is not just a form of governance. It is a mode of associated living, a sense of collaborative community. School education should aim to develop such knowledge, capacities and values and dispositions that enable students to participate and contribute to the democratic functioning of India. D. Economic Participation School education should aim to develop such knowledge, capacities, values and dispositions that enable students to participate and contribute to the economy. Effective participation in the economy has a positive impact for both the individual and for society as a whole. E. Cultural Participation Understanding the culture and heritage embedded in the family and community is at the core of cultural participation. School education should promote cultural literacy and enable students to acquire knowledge, capacities and values and dispositions to participate meaningfully and contribute positively to culture. Page number 24 1.3.2 Values and Dispositions, Capacities and Knowledge The broad aims of education are best achieved through A. Developing appropriate values including traditional values of Indian heritage, ethical and moral values, democratic values and epistemic values. B. Acquiring Positive Dispositions Positive work ethic, curiosity and wonder, and pride and rootedness in India. C. Developing capacities for inquiry, effective communication, problem solving and logical reasoning, creativity and aesthetic expression, maintaining health, productive work and effective social engagement. D. Acquiring knowledge in breadth and depth. The seven curricular areas of languages, mathematics, science, social science, art education, physical education and well-being and vocational education along with interdisciplinary areas develop multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary knowledge in students. Such knowledge allows students to develop a well-grounded understanding of the world. These values and dispositions, capacities and knowledge are often developed together and the content, pedagogy and assessments aim to weave them together seamlessly. 1.3.3 Curricular Aims, Goals, Competencies and Learning Outcomes the learning standards to achieve the above values and dispositions, capacities and knowledge are articulated at four levels. A. 
curricular aims have been articulated within each of the curricular areas. These aims are to be achieved by the end of each of the four stages of schooling. The aims of all the eight curricular areas put together should result in the achievement of the broad aims of school education as articulated above. B. Curricular Goals Curricular goals are more specific statements that give direction to curriculum development and implementation in order to achieve the curricular aims. They are also specific to a school stage. Example, the foundational stage and a curricular area. Example, mathematics. C. Competencies Competencies are specific learning achievements that are observable and can be assessed systematically. In this NCF, competencies, which are only suggestive and may vary in different contexts, are directly derived from a curricular goal and are expected to be attained by the end of a stage. Summative assessments at the end of each stage of schooling should be based on these competencies. D. Learning Outcomes LOs are granular milestones of learning and usually progress in a sequence leading to the attainment of a competency. These LOs enable teachers to plan their content, pedagogy and assessments towards achieving specific competencies. Syllabus and content developers would have to adapt these LOs based on the contexts in which they are applicable. Page number 25 Thus, in this NCF, there is a clear flow of increasing specificity from the broader aims of education to specific LOs. Through these clear linkages, all stakeholders can observe and evaluate the educational achievements of students that should lead to meeting the broad aims of school education. An illustration of such a flow in language education is given here. Figure 1.3i Aim of Education Rational thought and independent thinking or autonomy. Making choices based on rational analysis, creativity and a grounded understanding of the world and acting on those choices is an exercise of autonomy. This indicates that the individual has gained the capacity for rational reasoning, critical thinking, knowledge with both breadth and depth and the discernment to understand and improve the world around them. Developing such independent thinkers who are curious, open to new ideas, think critically and creatively and thereby form their own opinions and beliefs is thus a very important aim for school education. Next stage, language education. Curricular aim. Effective communication skills. Students should develop their language capacities to think critically, identify real-world problems, analyze them, make rational arguments and work out solutions. The capacity to use language to think and communicate well in a variety of situations is critical for effective democratic, social and cultural participation. The next step is Curricular Goal Language 1 R1 Secondary Stage CG3 Uses language to develop reasoning and argumentation skills by engaging with a variety of audio and written material. Next stage Competency Language 1 R1 Secondary Stage C3.2 argues with proper rationale by carefully evaluating premises. Moving on to the next step, learning outcomes. Language 1, R1, secondary stage, grades 9 and 10. Grade 9. 
evaluates the premises of an argument for its clarity, relevance and reliability of evidence, recognizes own emotional biases while reading and listening. Grade 10 Lists premises, reasons and evidences that are useful for an argument. Makes logical connections between premises and conclusion in speech and writing. Page number 26 1.4 Stage Design This NCF has divided the school curriculum into four stages as per the recommendation of NEP 2020. 1.4.1 Foundational Stage A. This stage is for students aged between 3 and 8. B. The learning standards for this stage have been set based on domains of development. Physical development, socio-emotional and ethical development, cognitive development, aesthetic and cultural development, and language and literacy development. In addition to these domains, it is important to set learning standards for developing positive learning habits that serve as a foundation for all further school learning. C. Developing foundational literacy and numeracy finds adequate emphasis in this stage. Children learn two languages, R1 and R2 and are expected to achieve foundational literacy in R1 by the end of this stage. D. The content to achieve these learning standards are predominantly concrete play materials such as toys, puzzles, picture books and manipulatives during the first three years. Textbooks or playbooks or workbooks are recommended only from grade 1. Children's literature is a particularly important source of content for this stage. E. The pedagogy is largely play-based and emphasizes nurturing, caring relationships between the teacher and the children. There should be a balance between self-paced individual learning and group activities. Systematic guidance is required for developing foundational literacy and numeracy. F. Assessments are conducted largely in the form of qualitative observations by teachers. In grades 1 and 2, worksheets can be a source of information on children's learning for the teacher. Explicit tests and examinations are deemed to be inappropriate for this stage. 1.4.2 Preparatory Stage A. This stage is for students aged between 8 and 11. B. The learning standards for this stage have been set for two languages within language education, R1 and R2. Mathematics, art education, physical education and the world around us as an interdisciplinary area of study. Work and pre-vocational skills are included as part of the world around us curriculum. C. Content can be presented slightly more through textbooks while concrete materials and experiences still form the core of content presentation. The world around us, TWAU in particular, should rely more on activities and experiences rather than presented as inert facts in textbooks. To take children well beyond foundational literacy and develop a genuine interest in independent reading, children's literature will need to play a major role in the content for language education in the preparatory stage. Page number 27. D. Activity and discovery-based pedagogy should continue to play a big role in the preparatory stage classroom. 
but students should be encouraged gradually to be active participants in more formal classroom settings. Practice and other activities to develop fluency should find a place during school hours and as homework. E. Short formal written assessments are appropriate for this stage. Teachers' observation of students' work continues to form an important assessment mechanism. Periodic summative assessments can be utilized to supplement the more regular formative assessments. Summative assessments at the end of this stage should be based on the competencies defined in the learning standards. 1.4.3 Middle Stage A. This stage is for students aged between 11 and 14. B. Students need to learn three languages, R1, R2 and R3 in this stage. Learning standards are set for these languages as well as for mathematics, art education and physical education. Science education and social science education have separate sets of learning standards and vocational education finds its own curricular space and learning standards. These areas represent different forms of knowledge and students are expected to gain a more formal understanding of the nature of as well as of the methods of inquiry in each form. C. The content in the middle stage needs to reflect the engagement with theoretical concepts and the introduction of theories and conceptual frameworks specific to each form of knowledge. There is a shift to more abstract ideas and the students are expected to engage with unfamiliar contexts and situations. The language used in the content should assist students in developing academic linguistic proficiency. Such expansion, both in the different forms as well as abstraction, can pose challenges to students. Well-designed textbooks that reflect the specific goals of learning standards have a very significant role to play in presenting content in easy and comprehensible formats in this journey from concrete to abstract. D. The pedagogy adopted in this stage should be a judicious balance of direct instruction as well as opportunities for exploration and inquiry. Building on prior knowledge and opportunities to learn from errors become important considerations for instructional strategies. There should be a constant focus on the methods of inquiry within each curricular area. E. Assessments can be more formal and explicit. Assessment design has a very important role to play in shifting the focus from content retention to conceptual understanding and fluency in the methods of inquiry. Students should be given opportunities to engage with higher order capacities of analysis and synthesis through meaningful yet challenging assessments. Summative assessments at the end of this stage should again be based on the competencies defined in the learning standards. Page number 28 Figure 1.4.1 Now, we have four groups. The first group has a heading called Languages. Group 2 has three headings, Art Education, Physical Education and Well-Being. And the third one is vocational education. Group 3 has two headings, social science, interdisciplinary areas. Group 4 has two headings, mathematics and computational thinking and science. Now, we will discuss group 1, languages. Languages native to India, compulsory. Other languages, compulsory. Modern Indian languages, classical languages, foreign languages. Now we move to group 2. 
and the first heading is art education indian classical music folk music contemporary music theater puppetry sculpture fine arts folk painting graphic design motion pictures photography textile designing now physical education and well being yoga and lifestyle sports and nutrition physical education for students with disabilities biomechanics and sports moving on to vocational education agriculture cereal production agriculture seed production agriculture gardening automobile servicing machining electronics community health accounting services data entry and management banking services retail services textile and garments now we move to group 3 it has two headings the first one is social science history geography political science psychology psychology and mental health economics development economics sociology philosophy anthropology archaeology interdisciplinary areas business studies accounting sustainability and climate change journalism indian knowledge systems legal studies now finally group 4 mathematics and computational thinking mathematics computer science business mathematics advanced mathematics probability and statistics science physics chemistry biology earth sciences astronomy modern physics biology page number 29 1.4.4 secondary stage this stage is for students aged between 14 and 18 b phase 1 grades 9 and 10 1 all students would continue to engage with all the curricular areas as in the middle stage in addition students would study environmental education as an interdisciplinary area of study they would develop capacities for reasoning and argumentation for issues in the public sphere along with ethical and moral reasoning they would use these capacities in the context of environment education learning standards have been set for these areas of study c phase 2 grades 11 and 12 1 choice based courses are to be offered to enable flexibility and choice for students and to remove hard separations between disciplines and academic areas 2 students need to study two subjects from language education called group 1 as shown in figure 1.41 at least one of which must be a language native to india literature subjects are also contained in language education at this level 3 students need to choose four subjects with an optional fifth subject from at least two of the following three groups as shown in figure 1.41 first group 2 art education physical education vocational education second group 3 social science and humanities interdisciplinary areas third group 4 science mathematics and computational thinking four this scheme allows for both breadth of study as well as gaining disciplinary depth to allow for interesting combinations there should be no further restrictions for students to choose specific streams 
5. An illustrative list of subjects that can be made available within each group is given here. 6. Some illustrative combinations possible with this scheme are given in figure 1.42. D. Textbooks play a significant role in organizing content in grades 9 and 10. In grades 11 and 12, students should be encouraged to source content from multiple channels. Course compendiums can be utilized in grades 11 and 12 to make the choice of content more dynamic and flexible. E. Pedagogy at this stage should expect more independent learning from the students. More opportunities for self-study and group work should be encouraged. Classroom interactions should also be diverse. Didactic, Socratic and inquiry-based methods are all appropriate for this stage. Page number 30 Now, we have some combinations for you. The first one is combinations for commerce. The second is combinations for science. The third one is combinations for social science. And finally, the fourth one, multidisciplinary combinations. Under combinations for commerce, the first combination is Hindi, English, Business Studies, Accounting, Economics from Group 3, Business Mathematics from Group 4. And the second combination under combinations for commerce is Bengali, English, Business Studies, Accounting from Group 3, Business Mathematics from Group 4, Fine Arts from Group 2. Now moving on to combinations for science. The first combination is Classical Telugu, Sanskrit, Mathematics, Physics, Chemistry from Group 4, Sustainability and Climate Change from Group 3. The second combination is Gujarati, English, Biology, Physics, Chemistry from Group 4, Indian Classical Music from Group 2, Optional Mathematics from Group 4. Now the third group. Combinations for Social Science. Under this, the first combination is Marathi, French, History, Economics, Psychology from Group 3, Contemporary Music from Group 4. And the second combination here is Assamese, Sanskrit, Geography, Political Science from Group 3, Indian Classical Music from Group 2, Optional Mathematics from Group 4. And finally, the fourth combination, that is, multidisciplinary combinations. Here, the first combination is Classical Tamil, Hindi, Gardening from Group 2, History, Journalism from Group 3, Mathematics from Group 4. And the second combination here is Pali, Malayalam, Folk Music from Group 2, Automobile Servicing from Group 2, Business Studies from Group 3, Optional Business Mathematics from Group 4. Page number 31. F. Assessments and Board Examinations. 1. Students should be given opportunities to engage with higher order capacities of analysis and synthesis through meaningful yet challenging assessments. 2. Board examinations for grade 10 should be based on the competencies set for each of the curricular goals in that area. Art education, physical education and vocational education would have local assessments with board certification. 3. To get a grade 12 certificate, the students should pass the following board examinations. 1. Two examinations in languages. 2. Four examinations from at least two groups with one additional optional exam. 3. Subjects in Group 2, Art Education, Physical Education and Vocational Education would have local assessments with board certification. G. 
implications for schools and boards of examinations 1 schools and examination boards should be prepared to offer and assess subjects from all the 10 curricular areas for grade 10 right from the beginning of the implementation of this ncf 2 schools and examinations boards should be prepared to offer a minimum of two languages for grades 11 to 12 from the beginning of the implementation of this NCF. 3. All board examinations must move towards becoming easier without any compromise on assessing genuine learning by testing basic concepts and competencies across subjects rather than rote learning. 4. Schools should be prepared to offer subjects from at least two groups amongst groups 2, 3 and 4 immediately. Within five years, schools should be ready to offer subjects from all four groups. Within 10 years, schools should offer many more subjects covering all curricular areas and students should study subjects across all four groups. 5. The secondary stage has been divided into two phases, grades 9 and 10 and grades 11 and 12. In 10 years, all school systems should move to a single secondary stage where students have choice and flexibility right from grade 9 following the current curricular structure of grades 11 and 12. Thus, Realizing the NEP vision of the secondary stage as being four years of multidisciplinary study across all curricular areas. 6. The current system of study in annual and two-year patterns should move to a semester and or annual design. This would allow for greater flexibility in the design of courses as well as course options for students. 7. In 10 years, boards of examination should be prepared to offer certification through modular examinations that each test far less material and are taken immediately after the course is taken in school. NEP 2020 4.38 Page number 32 1.5 Few thrust areas of this NCF In this section, highlights of few thrust areas of this NCF have been summarized. It must be noted that these are not the only thrust areas in this NCF. However, these are being highlighted in the summary because often these are given inadequate importance. This NCF renews the focus on art education, physical education and well-being and vocational education and brings them into the core curriculum. The need for environmental education has been systematically addressed. These focus areas also aim to be rooted in India and in knowledge of India, including Indian knowledge systems. One point. 5.1 Art and Physical Education Art and Physical Education are given their due emphasis in this NCF. Specific curriculum aims and learning standards have been set in these curricular areas too, so that education in these domains is carried out with the same rigor and expectations as other school subjects. To give a holistic education to students, it is important to see these areas as part of the main curriculum and not just as co-curricular or extra-curricular activities. A. The aim of art education is to promote joy in exploring and creating artwork, develop imagination and creativity, and develop empathy and sensitivity and a sense of belonging to our culture. The processes of creating as well as appreciating art are given equal emphasis. B. 
the aim of physical education is to promote love for physical activity and sports develop capacities for skillful engagement in physical activity and sports and develop resilience empathy and cooperation india has a wonderful tradition of yoga which is a wholesome experience for maintaining mind and body wellness physical education gives yoga an overall mind body wellness its due place c the learning standards for art and physical education have been set as nested learning standards it is recognized that schools and school systems would need time to get prepared to achieve the complete learning expectations in these domains the first set of learning standards called learning standards 1 details the full range of curricular goals and competencies for this curricular area all schools should accomplish these as soon as they are able to add the required resources for art or physical education nested within learning standards 1 is a subset called learning standards 2 which can and should be accomplished by all schools from the very initiation of the implementation of this ncf d art education introduces visual arts music dance and movement and theater in the foundational stage the arts contribute towards the sensorial physical socio emotional aesthetic and cultural development of young children in the preparatory stage students develop the skills for making art and also develop a curiosity towards local art forms and artists the objective of art in the middle stage is to help students develop an appreciation for the artistic and cultural diversity of their region and other parts of india in the secondary stage students should develop an awareness of the wide scope of applications in the visual and performing arts page number 33 e in physical education at the foundational stage the focus is on the development of gross and fine motor skills through free play in the preparatory stage local games are introduced but maintain fluidity and not specific rules of play the middle stage contains more structured sessions and skill development The secondary stage provides opportunities and choices for gaining depth in specific sports. Throughout all stages, mind-body wellness is promoted through activities and practices such as yoga as well as through education in healthy lifestyles and good nutrition. F. Assessments are more performance-based in these domains. Thus, a wider variety of assessment tools need to be employed including detailed observation reports and student portfolios g the last period in the secondary stage timetable is recommended to be an optional extra time for students to engage in their preferred art or sports activities local artists artisans and sport persons can engage with the students in schools to give a wider exposure including leading to participation in inter school sports competitions and other clubs or inter school activities 1.5.2 vocational education school education should prepare students not just to understand the world around them but also to do productive work these capacities for work would enable students to be productive members of their households as well as participate in the economy thus this ncf sees vocational education as an integral part of the curriculum a through the curricular area of vocational education students would be exposed to and develop basic skills in three forms of work 
work with life forms work with machines and materials and work in human services b the school curriculum at the preparatory and middle stages would endeavor to build relevant capacities in the above mentioned three forms of work as we can easily observe these forms of work not only provide the necessary breadth in capacities for productive work but they also become the foundation for developing capacities in vocations in primary secondary and tertiary sectors of the economy thus meaningfully contributing to the aim of economic participation c in the secondary stage of 4 years the first 2 years would work towards consolidating these capacities to develop transferable skills that serve students well in any vocation in the last 2 years of schooling in the secondary stage students will be given opportunities to specialize in specific vocations of their choice d the content of vocational education should be locally relevant as far as possible and at the same time respond to the aspirations of students in the secondary stage the learning standards should align with the national skills and qualifications framework nsqf levels e the content must instill respect for the dignity of labor f the pedagogy should balance making and thinking in a manner that is relevant for vocations workshops and projects are effective ways of teaching vocational capacities internships and apprenticeships are encouraged while taking safety considerations into account page number 34 g assessments should be based on observations portfolios and projects and should not just focus on capacities and skills but also values and dispositions 1.5.3 environmental education one of the biggest challenges in the 21st century is the conservation of the natural environment even when looked at purely from a human point of view environmental degradation becomes a justice and equity issue NEP 2020 recognizes this challenge and the need for a meaningful educational response this ncf gives the required emphasis to developing knowledge capacities values and dispositions that would develop both awareness and abilities to act responsibly in environmentally sustainable practices students also need to develop capacities for interdisciplinary thinking since most real life problems need interdisciplinary solutions understanding and responding to the problem of environmental degradation and climate change needs interdisciplinary thinking too thus this ncf focuses on environmental education as part of the education in interdisciplinary areas in grades 9 and 10 a India has had a long tradition of understanding the intimate connection between nature and human life. However, the pressures of modern life have fractured the bonds between the natural environment and human beings. Ideally, knowledge from ancient times to the modern should converge towards sustainable solutions to the growing environmental challenges. environmental education constitutes an important step in this direction by incorporating topics from various subject areas student will learn to appreciate the nuances and complexity of the human nature equilibrium and the impact and trade offs of different decisions taken at a societal or even individual level b 
the main aims of environmental education are to 1 create a strong foundation of environmental literacy which includes understanding the interlinkages between ecological social economic and political factors 2 develop a more compassionate attitude towards the natural environment, drawing upon teachings from ancient Indian traditions and practices, the Indian constitution, as well as scientific research on the effects of modern human activity on the environment. 3. Develop an action-oriented mindset and skill set so as to promote environmental causes with a solid understanding of how individual, societal, national and global actions can help us restore the balance between humans and nature and thereby save our planet and ourselves. C. In the foundational stage, Spending time in nature is an integral part of pedagogy, encouraging children to observe and interact sensitively with plants, animals, insects and birds. Stories, poems and songs should have elements of the environment and appreciation of nature. D. In the preparatory stage, through the study of the world around us, Students begin to appreciate the interdependence between human society and the natural environment. E. In the middle stage, concepts related to the environment are integrated into science and social science. The interactions between the natural world and the human world are understood through both scientific and social scientific models of inquiry. Page number 35 F In grades 9 and 10 of the secondary stage, environmental education is part of interdisciplinary areas. Students will view environmental education from a social-ecological perspective as opposed to a perspective informed primarily by either science or social science. They would develop capacities for reasoning and argumentation, including ethical and moral considerations. They would use these capacities in the context of debates around environmental conservation and protection that integrate understanding from the sciences on ecological and climate processes and understanding from the social sciences on ideas of justice, equity and human well-being. 1.5.4 Rootedness and pride in India Our country possesses a rich cultural and civilizational heritage with varied traditions within and across local communities. Contemporary India is equally vibrant, taking its place in the modern world. Our country is home to deep knowledge and extensive practice in a variety of disciplines and fields from literature to mathematics, philosophy to art, grammar to astronomy, ecology to medicine, architecture to agriculture, ethics to governance, crafts to technologies, psychology to politics, literature to music and economics to education. As recommended by NEP 2020, this NCF is strongly rooted in India's context, Indian thought and Indian knowledge and knowledge systems. This rootedness of this NCF is manifested in the following ways. A. The holistic vision of education and its aims from our ancient heritage to our modern thinkers informs the overall approach of this NCF. B. 
the vibrant epistemic approach of Indian schools of thought towards knowledge and how we know. C. The core of the Guru Shishya tradition as a base for the centrality of the teacher student relationship for effective learning. Correspondingly, the tradition of dialogue and debate as a tool towards the discovery of the truth. D. The use of local resources of learning, including language, practices, experts, histories, environment, and more, as rich sources of illustrations or case studies. E. The rich history of Indian contributions to various fields not only develops pride and self-confidence, but also enriches learning in those areas. For example, the approach to environmental education is deeply enriched by the range of nature conservation traditions across India. The approach to values and ethics is rooted in Indian concepts and practices of respect and compassion for fellow humans and all creatures. F. The importance of the involvement of parents and communities in education. 1.6. Other Curricular Areas While the curriculum is divided into eight curricular areas, the approach of this NCF ensures that there is no hard separation between science and art, between streams of vocational and academic, between curricular and co-curricular, etc. The previous section highlighted the summary of art education, physical education, vocational education and education in interdisciplinary areas, including environmental education, these have found the necessary focus as part of the curriculum. In this section, key highlights of the other curricular areas are summarized. Page number 36 1.6.1 Language Education A. The rich multilingual heritage of India is given its due place in the language education curriculum. The curriculum aims at developing linguistic proficiency for academic use in three languages by age 15, grade 10. At least two out of these three languages should be languages native to India. At least one language native to India will be studied at the literature level. B. At least one language native to India will be offered as an option for the medium of instruction to all students up to grade 12. C. The language in which literacy is first learnt in school, R1, should be a language that is most familiar to the student. Usually, this is the mother tongue of the student or the language that is prevalently used in the neighborhood. D. Since it is in R1 that literacy is first attained, it must be used as the medium of instruction, MOI, for other subjects, at least until literacy in another language is attained. E. In grades 11 and 12, at least two languages will be studied, at least one of which is a language native to India. F. Language education in all these languages would not just aim for oracy and literacy. Students should develop effective communication, discussion and writing skills in these languages along with capacities for literary appreciation and creative use of language. G. Learning a language is learning a culture. Language education aims to enable the student to immerse and participate in the linguistic heritage and culture of India, including through participatory engagement with the rich written and oral literature of India, such as stories, poems, songs, epics, plays, films and more. 
H. Developing a lifelong interest in reading is an important curricular goal in language education. The use of library resources plays an important role in achieving this goal. I. The pedagogic strategies pay attention to developing digital reading skills. Deep reading instead of shallow reading is emphasized in the context of an attention economy where there are strong incentives for constant shifts in attention. 1.6.2 Mathematics Education A. Mathematics education has never been more important globally for students and for society. The close connection between mathematics and artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, climate modeling, infrastructure development and the numerous other related scientific issues faced by India and all nations today makes mathematics a particularly crucial area of school education. B. The mathematics education curriculum not just aims for capacities in foundational numeracy, mathematical thinking and problem solving in students, but also intends to nurture joy, wonder and curiosity and the ability to see patterns and appreciate the elegance and aesthetics of mathematical concepts and ideas while at the same time eliminating the fear of mathematics that is widely prevalent today. Page number 37 C. In the foundational stage, attaining foundational numeracy, that is, understanding and adding and subtracting with Indian numerals, a sense of basic shapes and measurement using non-standard tools and early mathematical thinking through play represents the key focus of mathematics education. D. In the preparatory stage, while the focus is on building a conceptual understanding of numbers, the four basic operations, shapes and spatial sense, measurement, standard tools and units, and data handling. The objective is to develop capacities in procedural fluency and mathematical and computational thinking to solve problems from daily life. E. In the middle stage, the emphasis moves towards abstracting some of the concepts learnt in the preparatory stage in order to make them more widely applicable. Algebra, in particular, is introduced at this stage through which students are able to, for example, form rules to understand, extend and generalize patterns. More abstract geometric ideas are also introduced at this stage and relations with algebra are explored to solve problems and puzzles. F. Finally, the secondary stage focuses on further developing the ability to justify claims and arguments through logical reasoning. Students become comfortable in working with abstractions and other core techniques of mathematics and computational thinking, such as the mathematical modeling of phenomena and the development of algorithms to solve problems. G. Mathematics has an extremely rich history in India, spanning thousands of years from Vedic times to the modern era. By learning about the development of mathematics in India, as well as throughout the world, a rootedness in India can be enhanced along with a more general appreciation of the history of mathematics and of the remarkable evolution and development of mathematical concepts through time and India's critical role in these developments. 1.6.3 Science Education A. Science education gives equal emphasis to acquiring capacities for scientific inquiry and conceptual understanding of theories, laws and principles in science. 
Through these capacities and concepts, students are expected to develop a scientific understanding of how the physical natural world functions. B. While scientific knowledge has exploded, expecting to include all this knowledge in the school curriculum, where time and space are limited, results in unnecessary burden on students. Content for science education is chosen to be limited to its essential core to give adequate space and time for developing important capacities for scientific inquiry, such as the ability to put forth questions, observations, hypotheses, experiments, arguments, predictions and data analysis. C. In the foundational stage, science education begins as part of the cognitive development of the child. Making sense of the world through observation and logical thinking is an important curricular goal at this stage. D. In the preparatory stage, the understanding of the physical world is acquired in an interdisciplinary manner through the study of the school subject, the world around us. Page number 38 Students will be encouraged to ask questions, observe, experiment, make connections, analyze and make explanations of phenomena in their immediate environment, both social and physical thereby discovering for themselves the basics of the scientific method. E. In the middle stage, science education focuses on the scientific exploration of concrete experiences of the students. They begin to use mathematical and schematic representations to model and analyze phenomena. By engaging with the evolution of scientific theories, students begin to appreciate the nature of scientific knowledge and methods of scientific inquiry. Students also develop the ability to communicate their understanding effectively. F. In grades 9 and 10 of the secondary stage, more abstract scientific theories and conceptual structures are introduced with increasing methodological sophistication in the disciplines of biology, chemistry, physics and earth science and their interrelations with each other and with other subjects. G. In grades 11 and 12, students can choose specific disciplines within science such as biology, chemistry, physics and earth science. They can thereby delve further into these disciplines and engage with theories, laws, principles, concepts and methods of inquiry specific to these disciplines. H. In the middle and secondary stages, students also explore the relationship between science, technology and society. They understand and appreciate the history of science and the contributions of India to the overall field of science from ancient to modern times. 1.6.4 Social Science Education A. Social science is the systematic and scientific study of human societies that explores the relationship between the individual and society, social institutions and organizations. In this NCF, the term social science is also used to include those branches of the humanities that involve the more qualitative... Again that involve the more qualitative study of human society, culture, thoughts, creations, development and actions in the past and present. B. The purpose of social science education is to help students learn about the society in which they live. Example, how members of their society live, interact, behave, eat, 
speak and in what languages, express themselves through art, the traditions they follow, what they wear and their aspirations. C. Social science education also helps students develop pride in their culture and their country with a forward-looking spirit to continuously improve as individuals, as a society and as a nation. D. The approach to the study of social science aims to develop an interdisciplinary perspective rooted in disciplinary knowledge that enhances the student's capacities to understand social processes in a holistic manner. E. In the preparatory stage, the students study society as part of their local environment through the interdisciplinary subject of the world around us. F. In the middle stage, social science becomes a separate school subject and the content is organized in a thematic manner. Page number 39. Each theme would be studied through an integrated view of history, geography, political science, economics and other relevant disciplines such as psychology, philosophy, anthropology and sociology. Additionally, each theme will be studied at the local, regional, national and global levels. G. While students study history, geography, political science and economics as separate subjects in grade 9 and 10 of the secondary stage, a complete picture is attempted by ensuring that the same concept is also considered through the lenses of other disciplines in an integrated manner. This approach builds disciplinary depth while ensuring a holistic interdisciplinary perspective. H. In grades 11 and 12 of the secondary stage, social science is a choice-based option for students where they can choose to do an in-depth study from a range of disciplines that constitute the social sciences such as history, geography, political science, philosophy, economics, psychology, sociology and anthropology. I. Social science education aims to enable students to 1. Understand how societies function by developing awareness of how there is continuity and change in human civilizations, the interaction between nature, natural resources and human beings, the commonness and unity in diversity among people and their practices, and the transformations over time of various social, political and economic institutions. 2. Develop capacities for inquiry in social science, sourcing, verifying and cross-validating evidence through multiple sources, creative and critical thinking, forming coherent narratives based on available evidence, forming informed opinions and demonstrating logical thinking and proposing meaningful responses to contemporary concerns of society based on these methods of inquiry. J. While the entire social science curriculum would be strongly rooted in India from the local to the national level, Students would also learn and understand the significant contributions of India to the concepts and methods in the disciplines within social science from ancient to modern times. 1.7. School Culture and Processes School culture and processes have a direct and significant influence on learning of students. Thus, these must be nurtured and shaped systematically and carefully to enable achieving the aims of education. 1.7.1 School Culture School culture influences learning in two significant ways. First, it enables an effective learning environment for all students. Second, 
it has a significant influence on the development of values and dispositions. A. School culture has two aspects. The first aspect is values, norms and beliefs which form the school culture and the second aspect is behaviours, relationships and practices in which the culture is manifested and experienced. The elements that form the culture and its manifestation are deeply integrated. The students learn from and are influenced by the manifestations. Page number 40 B. These manifestations can be seen in three categories. Relationships amongst the people in the school, symbols that are displayed and celebrated, and arrangements and practices of the school. Systematic and deliberate effort must shape these manifestations to develop an enabling learning environment and the development of desirable values and dispositions among students. C. To achieve the aims of education, the constituent elements of school culture must have certain characteristics. 1. Relationships must have mutual trust and be respectful with openness, communication and collaboration as well as care and responsibility. 2. Symbols must thoughtfully highlight and celebrate the desired values and dispositions. 3. School arrangement and practices must manifest these desired values, including in-classroom practices, school assembly, mealtime arrangements, distribution of work, sports activities and the engagement with parents, family and the community. 1.7.2 School Processes School processes must ensure two things. The smooth functioning of day-to-day -day activities and enabling progress towards the achievement of the curricular goals. School processes can be broadly divided into the following categories. A. Curricular processes which includes school timetable, assembly, library related, student committees and forums, events and celebrations. B. Curriculum associated processes which include those related to teacher collaboration and professional development, engaging with parents, families and communities, and mealtime, health and hygiene. C. Organizational processes, which includes school development plans, time and resource allocation, student safety, resolving differences and disciplinary issues, and data management and reporting. 1.8. Creating a supportive ecosystem. This NCF only touches briefly upon the kind of ecosystem required for its implementation. These matters would be detailed in other relevant documents and forums. 1.8.1 .1, Capacity Building for Implementation Speedy and systematic capacity development of all stakeholders must occur to enable implementation of this NCF. This includes teachers, head teachers, principals, syllabus and TLM developers, teacher educators and other functionaries of the education system. Parents and community members must also be familiarized with this NCF. Page number 41 Relevant programs must be designed and implemented by institutions such as the SCERTs, particularly for teachers, rigorous programs would be required to help them bring this NCF to life in the classroom. 1.8.2 Ensuring an appropriate environment for learning Schools must be welcoming spaces that attract students. These must be safe and secure. 
they must also be supportive of and address the needs of the teachers. Quality, adequacy and maintenance of infrastructure are often the differentiators between a good school and a not so good one. Especially in the eyes of parents and the community. A. Outdoor infrastructure must be ensured which includes boundary or compound wall, basic school structure, open space for play and assembly, trees and plants and accessibility for the inclusion of all. B. Indoor infrastructure must include clean, spacious, well-ventilated classrooms, libraries and laboratories, dining area and drinking water facilities, toilets, semi-open and partially shaded areas and uninterrupted supply of water and electricity. C. Infrastructure must ensure safety and inclusion. 1.8.3 Enabling and Empowering Teachers Teachers must be the torch bearers of all educational improvement. Thus, teachers must be enabled and motivated in every way possible. Some key points for teachers' engagement and motivation are A. Teachers must have autonomy to respond to the reality of the classroom in the best possible manner to achieve the aims of education. For this, they must be enabled with the right teaching learning resources, physical environment and professional development. Along with this autonomy, teachers must have accountability, fully recognizing that accountability is a complex matter in education. B. Appropriate PTR must be maintained to enable student engagement and achievement. C. TPD is a very important aspect of the education system, ensuring continuous improvement and will be important in implementing this NCF. D. Pre-service teacher education will be transformed to achieve the objectives of this NCF as mentioned in NEP 2020. The National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education, NCFTE, associated with this NCF will be released shortly. E. Head teachers and school principals have a central role in ensuring the ethos and educational practices in their school that can ensure high quality implementation of this NCF. F. Academic and administrative functionaries of the education system would have to fully own the spirit of this NCF for its implementation. Page number 42 1.9 Community and Family Engagement For more holistic learning and upbringing of children, parental and community participation is necessary. Parents and the community must be deliberately and systematically engaged, including through orientation meetings, regular parent-teacher meetings and continuing dialogues to build perspective. Parents and members of the community can also act as resource persons. School management committees, SMCs are formal structures and these must be nurtured to play a vibrant role. You were just listening to the National Curriculum Framework 2023. This is brought to you by CIET NCERT, New Delhi, India.